All right, let's learn about categorical to categorical relationships next. In this chapter, I've been using the insurance data set with you, and our label is insurance charges, which is numeric. So this doesn't really fit for that particular context. So we're going to break a little bit from that uh, storyline, and we'll find a couple of categorical variables in that data set to, uh, to find and measure the relationship between as if one of them was the label, even though it hasn't been throughout the rest of this example. But that's okay. So the first thing we do is create a visualization. What kind of viz can you make when there's no numbers? Well, you make a table, a count table, and it's often referred to as a cross tab. So this is simply a table that takes each of the groups in both of the features. In this case, I'm going to use smoker and region. So let's use, uh, let's just look at the relationship between these and see if, if there's a difference in smoking across different regions. It doesn't really matter which one we put in the column or the labels. In this case, what I have is a count chart of the number of cases that are in a particular uh, cell here for a particular group in each one of those features. So the number of people who live in the Northeast and are not smokers, I have a count of those here, a count of those who are smokers and so forth. And you can see I've got these grand totals across the rows and the columns and overall, just as before, I still have 13, 38 cases. So uh, how do we analyze and what does it mean for there to be a relationship between these? What is the effect of region on smoker or smoker on region or whatever? Well, uh, the measure or the metric we use for that or the statistic is called a Pearson chi-squared score. So it's a form of non-parametric statistics. It's a family of statistics that does not depend on any distribution whatsoever, meaning we don't have to worry about whether or not the data are skewed uh, because skewedness is irrelevant with categorical data. And it's uh, this is one of many types of uh, statistics that are non-parametric tests we can use with categorical data. So let me show you how this works. This visualization was created in Tableau. And here's our brief example. We start by making, I'm going to use this as an example from Wikipedia, actually, and it's a common data set that's used uh, for, for teaching chi-squared scores all the time, actually. So uh, here's the idea. A contingency table is the fancy statistics term we use for a cross tab. We call it a cross tab when we're working in Python um, and, and Excel and any other number of tools, but it's okay. We'll call it a contingency table in the statistics world. So here's our count of individuals or families where the primary earner, I guess, or the, the, the person living in a particular neighborhood lives in either neighborhood A, B, C, or D. And this is the type of job they have, white collar, blue collar, or no job uh, at all. So what we're looking for here in this data set is to see if there is an effect, a relationship between what type of job they have and what neighborhood they live in. So just like our cross tab up here or contingency table, we've got that right down below here. So with that data set, we've got 90 people who are work white collar jobs living in neighborhood A and so forth through the rest of it. Now there is a frequency rule and the exact number of this rule depends on which paper you look at, but in general, a good uh, good rule of thumb is that we need to have at least five observations in each one of these cells. So at least five cases or observations of people who have each combination of these in order to run a valid chi-squared test. So what does that mean if one of these was actually numeric field, which you could use, you have to group or bin those numbers until they give you at least five values in each one. But We'll save that issue for another day. For now, we're going to generate a second table. We've got our contingency table. Now we're going to create what's called an expectancy table, which is an expected number of values in each cell. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, this is the number of cases or observations in each cell if there is no relationship between job type and neighborhood. So what does this depend on? Well, basically what we do is take the number, the total in each row and each column and we come up with a percent, basically, that should be white collar workers in neighborhood A based on that. So up here, we see that white collar employees represent 349 out of the 650 total workers, or 53%. So if there's no relationship, then we should have uh, an even number um, across all cells. But we do the same thing here with column A. Uh, neighborhood A represents 150 out of the 650 total workers. So uh, we take that percentage, uh, we multiply this percentage by 
the 150 that are in neighborhood A. So we're essentially normalizing by that, and that gives us uh, 80.54 people we would expect there to be in neighborhood A and B and D, because they all have the same number of people. In our sample or our total uh, subsample includes the same number of people in each neighborhood. So if there was no relationship between job type and neighborhood, we should have an even number of white collar, blue collar, and no collar workers across those neighborhoods since they have the same number uh, represented in our sample. Now C should have more because our sample includes 200 of C rather than 150. But it's the same overall percentage, 53.69% out of the total 650 uh, across uh, cases total. So we come up with that score for every cell. And the idea is to find out how different in total are the actual number of cases from the expected number of cases. So for example, we expect that in neighborhood A, there'll be 80 workers roughly, but there was actually 90. So neighborhood A is different from no effect, or it's higher than the mean. More white collar people in neighborhood A. Any others? Let's see, neighborhood D, we had 95 and we expected 80. So neighborhoods A and D, to even greater effect, have more white collar workers than others. Let's see about blue collar. So blue collar, we expect 35 almost and 46 there. So we've got more blue collars in B and what is it, B and C. So it looks like white collars tend to A and D, blue collars tend to B and C. How about people without a job? All right, we expect same thing, 34, 46. A eh, few more jobless people in neighborhood, not a, not a big difference. Maybe just neighborhood B and that's it, but it's not a huge difference. So how do we estimate this? Do we just take the difference between this cell and this cell and add it up for all those? Well, that wouldn't work because some are some of those differences would be positive and some would be negative, so they cancel each other out. So what do we do? We square those differences, and then we divide that difference by the expected number so that we don't overweight. For example, uh, this one right here, uh, we expect 35. Let's say this is our biggest difference. Well, that's our sm one of our smallest expected scores. We don't want to treat that the same as uh, a big difference Let's say there's a difference of 20 here. We don't want to see, treat that the same as a difference of 20 in neighborhood A because we expect a lot more there. So we divide the difference, the squared difference, by the expected count. And that gives us, and um, that's what my formula here says. So that gives us a, 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 a chi-squared piece, a piece of the overall stat. So the overall chi-squared score is basically the sum of this formula applied to every single cell. And that's it. Once we get that overall number, which in this case is 24.6, we use the degrees of freedom, which is calculated a bit differently for a non-parametric test. In this case, rather than the total number of cases minus the number of groups, it is uh, like it was before. In this case, it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So degrees of freedom is actually only six for this test, even though we have 1338 total cases. Okay, so how do we get the actual p-value? Rather than uh, teach you how to use a p-value table, I'm going to keep things simple. Come over here to the p-value tables and calculators and scroll down. I've added a couple links uh, to free online p-value calculators. This one, again, uh, used by a friend of mine. Uh, let's use his uh, or any that you find is fine there. They're all pretty, pretty reliable. So here's our p-value calculator for chi-squared test. We're going to put in the value, which in our previous example is 24.6. Where did I get that from? Back here on relationships, just in case you've uh, forgotten or didn't see that. Um, it's this formula added up for everything, every single cell, which I've got right here. And our degrees of freedom, uh, three minus one times four minus one. That's again, because of number of uh, rows minus one times number of columns minus one, that gives us six. So we come back here to our free calculator, change this to six, and that gives us our p-value really small. All right, so what does that mean? 0, 0, 0, 4, 0. Well, it's far less than 0. 0.05, which means we expect to see this difference, or we expect to see a chi-square value like this in any other sample that we collect based on, that includes neighborhood and uh, job type. We think that's a pretty reliable uh, chi-square score. And it's also a pretty big one, too. This is our effect size. Okay, well, let's go back now and uh, let's learn how to do this in Tableau. So pull up Tableau. Now, again, our 
our label was charges, so a chi-square is not really needed. Although you could argue, let me take that back for a second. Let me go back here where we looked at the charges histogram. You could argue that, hey, this is skewed. It's uh, We should use a non-parametric test since it's not a perfectly normal distribution. Although the skewness really wasn't that bad, 1.41. Um, plus there's things we can do to fix skewness. So I'm going to leave this as it was. Um, and anyway, let's come up with a new example. So here's the one I used in the book. Let's recreate that one. So what we're going to do is assume that uh, we want to predict um, where people live based on whether or not they smoke, or other way around, predict whether or not they smoke based on where they live. So pull in uh, smoker and region, and uh, I think I liked it reversed this way. And it, the only default table it gives us is this one right here. They call it, um, in Tableau, you can see it's called a text table. Uh, same thing, cross tab. What it needs here in the middle is to know what metric we want to use. It doesn't know by default that we want to count up the number of cases that are northeast and non-smoker versus smoker. So it needs to know, and it needs some, one of these measures to actually count up to put in the middle, and we haven't told it that. So what should we count up? Well, as long as there's no missing data, it actually doesn't matter which column we count up. So going back to look at the data source, I could use any feature that has no nulls or empties. So any of the original columns would work. Really anything but these that have nulls in it would work just fine. So, uh, you know what, I guess I'll use charges since that's our label in the typical examples here. So I'm going to grab charges and I'm going to drop it on uh, text. And notice that by default it uses the sum of charges and puts it here in the middle for each one of these cases. I'm going to change that to a count, whoops, right here, count of charges. So essentially it's counting up the number of people who have both of these values and it doesn't even care what the charges are. It's not even, it's not including that number. It's just counting up records, which is exactly what we want. All right, so what do we do next? Go to, we need the, the totals and the grand total rows. So go to analysis and let's grab, uh, go to totals, uh, show row totals, analysis, show column totals, perfect. Um, let's also add a heat map overlay. Uh, a highlight table they call it oh and then it loses my oh well add those back in okay next now we have to create a few submetrics to make this work and what I'll do is simply show you those I've already created uh, so that you can copy them so make a couple of new measures so right click create calculated field the first one I want you to make is a totals for region and let me show you what this one looks like Pull it down here. Ooh, my window is gigantic. All right. So uh, this uses what's called a window sum function. What is that? Well, as I looked into it myself, I basically realized this is going to be more of a detailed explanation than we really want to get into for this book at this point. So let's suffice it to say that what this is going to do for us is simply come up with a keep track of these totals for us right here along uh, either the column or the row. And uh, it's also going to keep track of the number of totals that we have. So we need to create two of these, one for region and one for smoker. The way we do that, after we write this window sum count region, just like that, go down here to default table calculation, click on that, and change compute using from automatic to region. So that, hence, I'm going, to I'm going to label this as totals region. All right, just trust me on that. Create that, hit OK. Do the same thing for total smoker or whatever other feature you want to make. It's the same. Uh, and what I'm counting here, just like before, uh, it doesn't actually matter as long as it's any feature that is not missing values. I could put charges in there again like I did before. I put smoker just because that's the one I was working with, and I know there's no nulls, so that'll work as well. Same thing, come down here, default table calculation, change it from automatic to smoker, hit OK. Now we need one more for the grand total. Create an, one more new calculated field. And in this case, uh, I did put charges just for something to pick. It didn't matter again. But I changed my default table calculation to advanced. And once I chose advanced, it brings up this view where I could put both region. I can select one and move it into 
the addressing list here. I don't want that one though. So grab both region and smoker, move them over here till you have them both on this side. Leave this how it is, hit OK. Leave, then it'll change this to at the level deepest, restarting every none, and this will stay unchecked. Leave the rest of this just like it is. Okay, now that we've got that, now what we need to do, uh, we have our cross tab or our contingency table. Now we need to make our uh, expectancy table. So I made another new calculated field and I called it expected count for the expectancy table. And this one is pretty simple. I use uh, float to cast uh, region times uh, total smoker. I, I, these are both integers, but I wanted it to allow it to be a float once I divided by total grand. So you can cast something to a float this way by saying, okay, don't round it basically, even though these are both integers. And just to be clear, a float means uh, a number with decimals. So this is our uh, whole numbers that we referred to earlier on in the chapter. Okay, so this formula is going to be used elsewhere. This is actually to tie it back into the chapter. This is what we used right here, where we're saying let's take the, uh, um, let's multiply or get the percentage of the, the number of uh, people that should be in a certain cell for both the column and the row. That's what's being calculated right here, this 84.5. Okay. Uh, back here in Tableau. Now what we want to do is come up with uh, um, the actual chi-square values. So the way we do, now this expected count, it's just the formula. It doesn't generate the actual table, but it does do something nice for you. Let me show you. Grab expected count, and let's drop it, I think, here on, oops, drop it on detail. Yeah, there we go. So here's the nice thing. Now that we have that, it applies that formula here over each one of these cells. So notice here in Northeast, um, it says expected count 258, but the actual count you can see is 257. So Northeast is pretty much what you'd expect in terms of smoking. Um, now look at the Northwest. Count of charges, uh, that might be worth changing to smoker, count of smoker, but just for the sake of it saying something different, but that's all right. Uh, the actual count's 267, but we expected 258. So it looks like more people in the Northwest are not smokers than we would have expected, um, which means that we have fewer smokers than expected. Uh, let's see, who's our culprit then who's smoking more? Southeast, uh, let's go to yes. So, yep, there it is. So in the Southeast, we were expecting 75 smokers. We got 91 more smokers in the Southeast. How about Southwest? Uh, much less. So is it just the southeast? It's a problem. Northwest is kind of what we'd expect. Both, um, or so the northeast is what we expect. Uh, south, northwest, uh, fewer than expected. Southwest, fewer than expected. It's the southeast. That's where all of our, our smokers are, I guess. Well, with this data set, uh, at least. Uh, all right, so now let's come up with the chi-square score. We need to see uh, an overall score of these differences, and that'll tell us if there's a relationship between these two variables. So uh, to do that, now we need to create the uh, chi-square uh, cell values measure next. So right-click, create calculated field. Let me show you what we have in this one. This is our formula that is right here. Observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So here's where we have that. Here's the actual count uh, in that cell. And again, it doesn't matter if it's charges or something else. The actual count minus the expected count. And honestly, I don't really need that float right here. I'm going to take that out. Well, I do need that. No, whatever, I'll leave it. So actual count minus expected count, which is this formula used right here, squared, which starts there and ends here, divided by expected count. So this is going to give me an individual chi-square cell value for each cell. I'm going to put this also on detail. All right, so here's my chi-square score. So remember this one where we have, we expected 66, we got 67. That gives us a really small chi-squared cell value. So this one would tell us there's really no relationship between smoking and region. Then we get over here, this single cell has 
uh, chi-square of 1.1, which means you have big disparity there. Southeast, big, even bigger disparity there. And a decent one there, too. So lastly, we need an overall chi-squared score. So make one more metric, more calculated field. Here's what it's going to look like. Uh, it's simply a window sum of all of our chi-square cell values that we just calculated right here. So for this one, uh, default table calculation. Uh, again, I changed this one to, I uh, had to go to advanced. Um, rather than automatic, add in region and smoker, just like I did before. Hit OK, OK. Chi-square, I'm going to pull this out onto label. No, no, no. Detail. That's what I want. There we go. So now look at everything I'm seeing here. So as I hover over it, my overall chi-square is 7.343. Uh, and then you can see my individual cells. And this is the 7.343 is just the sum of all the different cells. And uh, what we need now is a p-value. So let's go back over here. Our degrees of freedom is number of rows minus 1, which is 1 and number of regions minus one, which is three. So three times one, three. So my degrees of freedom are three. My overall chi-square was 7.343. Let's see what we got. All right, almost significant. So it's not quite lower than 0.05, but when I see something like that, I don't just dismiss it simply because it didn't make the p-value. Uh, I still think this was worthwhile exploring. Um, and if one of these was my label, it'd be important to you know, include this in our, uh, right here, our data exploration report. There we go. But again, since uh, the theme of this report was to focus on insurance charges, um, I wouldn't include that analysis in here. I just want to show you how you do it if your label was categorical. Um, so that's it uh, for chi-squared in Tableau. Um, you can see it's kind of a, there we go, it's kind of a, a pain. But what I do like about Tableau in this case is the ability to have this interactive table that I can just hover over and see the individual influence, I guess, of each cell towards us, that uh, overall chi-squared score.